Um, as Billy said, my name is Rima Ahmed, and I am indeed our resident Wisconsin expert and a lifelong Midwesterner. And I'm excited to share more about my state because, um, among other things, because I'm out here, I know a lot about what is at stake in 2023 to ensure that we can win in 2024. And I know Billy just said a lot about, you know, what we're going to be doing over the next 10 years, a progressive decade. But what if I said that there's actions that we can take today, this, this year, this month, this spring, to ensure that we have a progressive pathway and that it is as clear as possible for us in 2024? What if I said that we could keep the momentum going from defying the odds in 2022 and going so that we can secure those critical wins for our entire progressive ecosystem? Well, I'm really proud to say that the Wisconsin Supreme Court race this spring is just that. This race is our once in this decade chance to secure repro rights for Wisconsinites, finally have fair maps and protect, protect democracy and voter access for all. But before I get into the specifics of this race and the grassroots groups that are going to lead us to a win this spring, I wanna take a step back and remind everyone about Wisconsin's recent past because the Wisconsin of today has been over 10 years in the making. Folks remember the 2010 Tea Party takeover um, in Wisconsin that brought in a Republican trifecta with Scott Walker at the top. And over his 10 years in office, Walker decimated progressive infrastructure. Luckily, uh, since 2016, MVP has been deeply investing in Wisconsin and slowly, sometimes it feels painfully slow, we have been reconnecting and refreshing our progressive roots. And what have we done in that time? Well, in 2018, we got rid of Scott Walker. In 2020, we elected Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And just a few months ago, we protected the governor's veto, not to mention getting as close as we have ever gotten to defeating Ron Johnson. We did that. So we are coming back from the precipice out here. And if we're going to stand a chance at bringing Wisconsin's progressive, his progressive history and legacy back, it is going to take dedicated investments and a disciplined staying the course. So you have here on the screen some statistics because honestly the margins are still razor thin in Wisconsin. If you look at some of these, um, yes, we had a Wisconsin version of a landslide in Governor Tony Evers' 3% victory last November. And Mandela, Mandela lost by one, only 1%. One Again, getting closer than even our progressive champion Russ Feingold got. Uh, looking a little further back to 2019, which is the last time we had a Supreme Court race uh, during a quote unquote off year. Although if you know Wisconsin, you know we have elections every year. There's no such thing as an off year out here. Um, but back in 2019, the Republican candidate won by less than 6,000 votes. So again, um, the races are still really close. We have a lot at stake. Um, so let's get into some of the specifics for the race this year. Well, we had a primary yesterday. Um, and folks may know, um, yep, primary, it was really exciting. Um, we had four candidates on the ballot. Um, this is a nonpartisan race. So, um, you know, the candidates were just running as themselves. So we do know the political ideology of, of these candidates. And um, we have two candidates now. We have a liberal candidate, Judge Janet Protasiewicz, and a conservative candidate, uh, Daniel Kelly. And I just have to uplift, you know, yesterday, it was a sunny, cold day. And while we still don't have all the data in yet, we already know that turnout was high. It was high for a primary, um, especially again, during an off year um, in the winter time, which means that progressives and conservatives alike are engaged and mobilized in this race. Um, and just another anecdote I wanna uplift from yesterday because um, I don't wanna steal any of Monka's thunder. I know she's gonna be sharing um, a lot about the work that they're doing. Um, but the youth turned out yesterday. Um, there are so many examples all across the state, but I'll just uplift one um, at a polling site at UW-Madison. Poll workers were expecting only 27 students to come out and vote, and they had nearly 500 students turn out. They literally ran out of paper ballots, and students had to wait in line to use the one voting machine to be able to cast their ballots. So we know that our base is energized, um, and that's good because if we look at a timeline here, um, we've got an election in six weeks, y'all. <laughs> And it's a, it's a bit surreal because honestly, for so many of the groups on the ground, they've been preparing for this race since at least last summer. And so with just six weeks away until um, the April 4th election, there's a lot at stake. 
uh, to protect democracy and to set ourselves up for a win in 2024. But no pressure, right? And speaking of what's at stake, many of the progressive issues that we all care about, um, I'm talking about repercussions not only for Wisconsin, but our entire Midwest region, for the country. We're talking about the opportunity to repeal the 170-year-old abortion ban in Wisconsin. If we flip the court, we have a chance to revisit our notoriously gerrymandered maps, some of the most gerrymandered in the nation, and maps that are going to be in effect for the next decade. Not to mention, importantly, expanding voter access and protecting democracy, up to and including ensuring we certify the presidency in 2024. And let me say that again, because I believe that repetition is holy. This election will shape the outcome of the 2024 presidential race, as well as every presidential race to come. So again, we know this is a critical election. We know what is at, what it is at stake, but how are we gonna win this? And we're gonna be hearing from one of our incredible grassroots partners again in a bit, uh, so stay tuned. But generally what we're talking about here is leaning into some of Wisconsin's superpowers. I'm talking about bold and innovative organizing like deep canvassing and mutual aid work. We're learning lessons, um, especially from the last few years around messaging and comms. And we're putting strategies like race class narrative together that inoculates voters against racist dog whistles that would otherwise divide voters in our state. We are unapologetically trusting the grassroots in the state to build together. And so a little bit more on, on how MVP is showing up in this. Um, as Billy started to say, um, we support more than 40 partners in over half of Wisconsin's 72, 72 counties. We work closely with the tables to share strategy, identify gaps, and show up for groups leading on the groundwork. And importantly, we are seeding groups that eventually make it to the tables. I'm talking about organizations like Grassroots Organizing, Western Wisconsin, Action, and Blue Sky Waukesha. These are organizations that don't receive much, if any, support from national funders and who rely on MVP for grants and amplification. So before I turn it over to my fellow Wisconsinite, I want to say this one more time. Wisconsin is clawing its way back from the precipice. Elections out here are won and lost by extremely small margins. But I know we can win this. We helped Wisconsin out Scott Walker, we defeated Donald Trump, and we prevented a Republican trifecta in the state. We can keep Wisconsin from falling back into long-lasting conservative agendas. We've done it before, and we will do it again.